In this video, we're going to look at using the NPN bipolar junction transistor. We're going to use the 2N3904 as a switch. I forgot to write in the uh, notes on here that, uh, as you can see here, the uh, switch is on the more negative side of the power supply. That is the uh, negative rail there. That's ground. That's our zero volt reference point. Whatever voltage we set the power supply to, that will be the uh, positive uh, voltage in relationship to ground. So as you can see here, the transistor, which is a switch in this circuit, is on the more negative side of the load. So we consider this the low side. When you hear low side switching, that's what it means. For high side switching with the transistor, like this switch, the switch is more positive than the resistor, and then the diode there that makes up part of the transistor, you need a PNP, bipolar junction transistor. So now, zooming in, I made a little mistake. I wrote C1 when I should have wrote Q1. And uh, so I just kind of fixed that with a pen. And uh, also, we have notes here to uh, make sure that uh, this resistor here, this is the uh, base resistor, is low enough value to ensure saturation. We'll get to that uh, coming up in a little bit. But it still can be a high value resistor because you just need a little bit of current to control a large amount of current. That's one reason why I use the transistor. And so you don't want to go too low because you don't really need much current. But you don't want to go too high, it'll start limiting current and limit current through the uh, load and the transistor right there. And of course you want to make sure that all of your components can handle the uh, power, the voltage and the current you're going to apply to them. The next thing we're going to discuss really quick is the mechanical switch. So this is more of a beginner's electronics uh, video. So I'm going to cover some things in more detail than I normally would. And I'm going to add this video to my web page. And uh, so I'll put the link down in the description. In any case, we're going to use a mechanical switch. Of course, we're going to turn an LED on and off in this video. And it's going to turn on and off just like when we press the uh, switch there. We could use this to directly uh, wire it. But uh, the main goal is to demonstrate what the transistor does. And the reason why is because the transistor, usually you use a digital high or low signal, and you could also use a sensor with a varying voltage to turn the transistor on and off. Also, you may have a lower power supply. As a signal, the transistor amplifies that power supply. You can even use a completely different uh, power supply. And uh, so, in any case, we're gonna put the mechanical switch on the board to get our signal here from the same power supply as what will be powering the transistor at least to begin with and so the pins only really fit in if you put it in the right direction they're a little too narrow to go that way when it comes to uh, bridging the gap and also the uh, I should probably just call them leads the uh, leads here the terminals of the push button are a bit wider than the uh, wires of other components and so this board kind of pushes them out and it kind of stretches the hole so I usually dedicate this spot you'll notice that I already have this jumper here going to the positive side of the power supply the transistor of course that we're using this is the schematic symbol for an NPN bipolar junction transistor that's their chemical makeup there the base is this middle area right here and then one side is the emitter, the other side is the collector. And when you look at the schematic symbol, right here you can tell which one is which. The emitter is the one with the arrow, the base, we have this dash to the side and a line that comes out. And uh, the line could also head that way or whatnot. Main thing is the arrow is the emitter, and then the other line without an arrow is the collector, and then the line attached to the bar is the base. That's the main takeaway. We're using the TO92 packaged 2N3904. So TO92 just means it looks like this. And uh, so it has this appearance. There's a lot of components that have this appearance. And you got to look at the uh, part number and whatnot to know the uh, pin layout. Let's see if we can see this. Uh, but uh, part numbers are kind of hard to see and the light's not uh, perfect. But there we go 2N3904. So not too bad. The emitter for an NPN bipolar junction transistor switch circuit 
the, the one with the arrow there, that goes to the negative rail, our ground. And so looking at the flat side, we can see the pin layout there. Emitter is to the uh, left, left pin. So if I move it uh, this way, now as far as the breadboard's concerned, it is the bottom pin or uh, terminal. And uh, we'll plug it right there. I might shuffle it a little bit later on. But in case, now we got the emitter to the bottom, base to the middle. That's where we'll give our signal. And then collector, that's where the load's going to come from the positive side of the power supply. And we'll briefly look at this. You can see here I stands for current when it comes to electronics, capital I. It looks like a lowercase l, but it's actually a capital I. So we have the current that will go through the load and then through the transistor. That's controlled by current, so we're working positive to negative. We're talking about conventional current, imaginary current. So the uh, conventional current with the base also, the direction the arrow goes, positive to negative. The base current controls, so we set how much current goes from base to emitter, but uh, whatever we put through there, a multiple amount of current will flow from collector to emitter. So if there's no base to emitter current, then there will be no collector to emitter current. Another thing is... Uh, you should have studied diodes by now. We have a PN junction right there. That's a diode. When this side's more positive, that side's more negative, it is forward biased. It does still block or drop a little bit of voltage. I should say drop. And uh, so we'll lose about 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volts uh, from uh, base to emitter. But after that, it'll start letting current flow as much as the resistor sets and the voltage across the resistor. So now we come to the circuit. Not a complicated circuit, but I'm spending extra time on this because this is really kind of the first transistor circuit that uh, most people learn. So I'm going at a slower pace. I'll go faster in the future. Again, we're using a mechanical switch when normally transistors are intended for digital uh, signals. And uh, so you'll learn about those in the future when you learn about those signals and them using a transistor as a switch get the general idea of this circuit and you'll understand what they're talking about when you get to those circuits. So in any case, as I said before, we're going to light an LED. And so we have to look at the limitations of the components and this will probably be the one we have to worry about the most. So it can only handle about 20 milliamps of current without it starting to uh, burn out or get damaged. And you can go lower than that just fine. It just won't be as bright. So it does have the property of blocking some of the voltage, probably about two volts for red, about three volts for green, and uh, different colors block different voltages, but usually it's somewhere between about two and three volts approximately. And so depending on how much uh, resistance we, uh, how much voltage I should say, we have from the power supply, we call it VCC. So you can see CC here, this is the collector. That's on the, collect the power supply on the collector side of the NPN bipolar junction transistor. Now it's just come to loosely mean a positive uh, voltage. So even if you're using a transistor where the collector is on the negative side, usually the power supply, or even if there's no transistor, people still use VCC to indicate the positive side of the power supply. So I'll mention that quick. But uh, in any case, the transistor can handle about 10 times as much current as the LED when it's fully on. There's hardly any voltage across it, so you don't have to worry about wattage. But uh, if there is voltage across it, it's not conducting fully. It's in the active region, so cut off means it's off completely. Saturated means it's conducting as good as it can. There's practically zero volts across it. Active region means it's somewhere in between. Then you have to worry about wattage. But since it's going to be conducting fully, we don't really have to worry about the voltage across it. And we can just focus on the current. Up to 200 milliamps current. This is a lot more than the LED, so we don't have to worry about damaging the transistor as long as we wire the uh, circuit up properly. And uh, so I always pay attention to that, how much current you're going to be switching when it comes to transistor switching circuits. So in any case, it's uh, pretty straightforward. Let's get to wiring that up. We already determined that the top pin up there is the collector, and if it begins with 2N, and it's a bipolar junction transistor, it probably has the same pin layout. There's also transistors that say P2N or whatnot. They probably have a different one. When I say starts with 2N, I mean 2 is the first one. So, 
any case, uh, I just happened to grab green, so I'll grab that one. Short lead, the cathode is uh, that bar right there. Long lead, the anode is that side of the arrow up there. Pretty straightforward, so I'll put the cathode to the collector. Because the LED is a diode, it only conducts in one direction. And I'm just going to grab a 1 kilo ohm resistor. We'll probably start with 5 volts. We could use 220, but uh, green LEDs are bright, even at low current. So we're just going to take a 1 kilo ohm. All we got to do is put it to the anode and then the positive rail. That's it. We now have a switch that's going to be off. And so to uh, finish the circuit, we just need to add a resistor. So I'm going to use a 10 kilo ohm resistor. So it's a lot higher than the values there because we need less current through uh, base to emitter. And uh, before we actually hook up the resistor I'm gonna turn the power supply on so it's off right now I just have to hit that when it's off that just means the output is off now I hit the uh, power button and it is on we saw a little current because I think that's when the capacitor within the unit charges or whatnot but in any case there you can see we got the power on the LED is definitely off power supply is off and uh, so we got five volts to both rails because I got these jumpers coming across here the alligator clips come from the power supply and so all we have to do is uh, connect the resistor from either side of the switch down here at the bottom. So the top is one connection, the bottom is another one. And you're going to notice something that uh, the LED came on when it shouldn't. That's because my body can actually give it a little bit of current so that it turns on. And uh, let's try to, uh, there we go. So, but when I'm pressing it and I, then I press the switch, you can see it's a lot brighter. So my body's not giving near as much current as the uh, switch does but uh, enough to turn it on a little bit if it's completely off so we went to that side of the switch as I said before these two bottom spots are always connected so I can go over here instead and it will work exactly the same like that so now the reason why 10,000 uh, kilo ohms is probably good for 5 volts I didn't completely check it is because the uh, 2N3904 has a gain when I looked at the data sheet they give you a bunch of different scenarios where it will be the gain so that means for uh, if it's only 30 for every one milliamp of current I put from base to emitter it will let about 30 milliamps of current go from collector to emitter about 30 times before it starts uh, limiting uh, current so in this case the resistor and the LED should be what's limiting the current the transistor should be conducting uh, better than 30 and a really good if you wire it uh, properly according to the data sheet you might get a 300 gain where for one milliamp you'll get 300 milliamps of course you use a lower amount of current from base to emitter than one milliamp but you just want to make sure that you have enough current for the multiple that you can expect to be able to provide that amount of current that you need so we're probably dealing with at least a hundred but in any case worse can case scenario it could be about 30 so we could use a lower signal but probably be a good idea to use a lower value uh, resistor maybe like 5 kilo ohm so really that's kind of topics for other videos so I'm just gonna mention it here because it's important but uh, other than that let's move on so now earlier I mentioned that we don't have to use VCC the power that is powering the uh, collector and the load of the NPN bipolar junction transistor in this case we can use a completely different power supply so I removed these jumpers that took the power from that rail and also applied it to that rail I removed them and I put a breadboard power supply on here instead and so we got uh, 5 volts there so that is powering the switch now I press the switch and the LED came on you may not have been able to see that that far away but uh, there you can see the LED is on and uh, the LED is not very bright. That Oh, I know why. I have to uh, connect the negative rails together. And they are actually... That was a big goof. So, I have to connect the negative rails together because that's the return path. So I'm just going to leave that in the video. Right there. So, I hadn't finished wiring it. Now you see the LED is bright. So, that's part of the uh, troubleshooting is to uh, make sure you check all your connections afterwards. Luckily I figured that out pretty quickly and we got that taken care of. So now we're dealing with uh, 5 volts and 5 volts. I'm going to move the jumper there, 
we'll go to uh, 3 volts. And uh, there you can see the LED still, I think just as bright as it was with the 5 volts. So I was being a little cautious when I said that uh, 5 volts is about the minimum for a 10 kilo ohm resistor from the uh, signal. And uh, we would have to actually measure this to see if we're losing a little bit. And uh, we can do that with the power supply actually. Let's do that quick. So right now it's a uh, 5 volts signal coming in. Uh, it's 1 milliamp. It's not very accurate here. So the other thing is we have 5 volts there. And uh, let's even go 3 volts. 3.3 volts at the rail. The power supply here, I'm going to bump it up to 12 volts. We already put the 1 kilo ohm resistor there. We would not want to do this with a 220 ohm resistor protecting the LED. But there we go. We got uh, 5 volts. And there you can see we got 8 milliamps of current going through the transistor. We can't see how much current's coming from this supply. But in any case, we're only using 3.3 volts there. Now we're using 5. So we can use a completely different power supply. And there we go. Even 3.3 uh, and 5, we're getting the same current through the transistor. So it's, it's saturated. We know that for sure. Even at 3.3 volts with a 10 kilo ohm base resistor. So... Again, I went through a lot more than I would for most transistor circuits, but that's because this is really the first transistor circuit people learn, and uh, at least the first one that is taught in text and whatnot. So I wanted to go through more detail from now on. Hopefully when you hear transistor switch or whatnot, especially an NPN bipolar junction transistor switch, you'll know exactly what they mean. And uh, also, one more thing, so I think I covered everything I planned to. We talked about the uh, gain, the beta, the uh, multiple amount of current that goes from collector to emitter based on what you put through the base to emitter. There's also, so that's the uh, symbol for beta, the Greek letter uh, beta. You could also call it HFE, so I don't think anybody does that anymore, but there are texts out there. That will say uh, HFE. It means the same thing as gain or beta. These three uh, different terms and the symbol are all used uh, to mean exactly the same thing when it comes to uh, transistors and uh, their gain. So I'll post uh, some more videos. Uh, thanks for sticking around this long. I'll post more videos and uh, make sure you check out one of them. Click subscribe and the uh, bell so you get updates that would help a lot and check out the web page I'll put that in the description for this topic here I'll try to write stuff out in more detail there I have already started on that so thanks for watching I'll see you in the next video